Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to take lights like this, dull, faded, and disgusting, and turn them into something like this. Beautiful. This shit is bad. Clarity second to none. Better than a day I rolled off the lot, and I'm going to be showing you first person view, up close and personal. Let's get down to business. Uh, this is a 2015 Acura TLX. And these are some very nice, expensive headlights. Uh, they are called Jewel Eye headlights. And that's what they call them on the street circuits or whatnot. Um, pretty much, they're pretty sought after headlights. A lot of um, uh, car enthusiasts that have these aftermarket or these uh, OEM headlights rebuilt have the insides of these headlights put into theirs because they're very, very aesthetic. They're very good looking, uh, complex headlights. But anyways, uh, as the opener suggests, I am showing you this with a new filming technique and some new equipment I got. Um, you know, I'm not going to be doing this all the time. It's rather difficult, but this is a first person view. You're pretty much seeing what my eyes see, give or take a couple inches or so, and the movement or whatnot is uh, consistent with my head as this is a uh, GoPro style head attachment. And uh, also with this filming style, you are getting a lot closer of the filming that I normally do. And you're kind of seeing it as I am going along. Um, so it's a really, it's just a really close up view and a really detailed um, uh, first person view that you'll be seeing this light uh, get done in. Of course, with this light is Acura, it is a, um, let's say, say medium soft light. Uh, it's, um, you know, not the softest, it's about a medium, uh, it's not hard, it's not soft, it's right there, kind of in, in between. So, of course, starting with a P500, you always want to start with a P500, no matter what the light, uh, consistency is. Even if you suspect it to be a 2K clear, even if you, uh, you know, suspect it to be super soft, or whatever the case may be. Um, if you're like, damn, I'm going to have to use 15 P220s on this, right? Or P320s or something like that, right? You always want to start with one little section with the P500 just to gauge, okay? Because um, even, you know, as a professional that I am, on the level that I am, sometimes I get shocked and amazed when I think one thing is something and then it ends up being another. So I always... Um, test it out and most commonly I'll look at it and be like oh this is just a you know regular light or whatever and you know I'm in a rush or whatever and I didn't really fully inspect it and I start with the P500 and then I'm like whoa what the fuck is this and I'm like oh okay and then I look on the edges and stuff like that and I'm like oh this is some kind of aftermarket spray and it's hella hard to get off so anyways and uh, also uh, once again a rule of thumb um, if you can get the light done with four P500s Use four P500s before you jump to 320s or 220s or whatever. A lot of people don't understand when you break out the 320s and the um, uh, P220s or whatever. Um, I, um, I never go lower than a P220. Uh, the lowest I go is hand, by hand with a P220. Because by hand, uh, you can you know you can apply more pressure. You're not doing the spinning, which is RPM and um, it's just a different, more grinding uh, motion instead of this finesse type motion uh, with hand. Okay, that's the that's the hardest. And then it's P220 by um, machine. Okay, you don't want to do any of those um, as much as possible. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of people don't uh, know when, and they're having troubles. They're DMing, uh, that you know, messaging me about. Uh, when do I use it? And you know, I started with you know, I did this Honda headlight, it's Toyota headlight, and I started with the P220s, and I got all these scratches everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, because I say it all the time, never start with those if you don't have to. Um, you know, for one, um, you know, when I say uh, if you can get it done with four, because uh, you know, four P500s, because they're so much less abrasive. 
They're uh, very nice to clean up after. You can hit them with one P800 most of the times, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, and it will take out all of, you know, any kind of little blemishes or any kind of striations or swirls that are left behind nine times out of ten. Okay, but when you're using a P220, um, that is the most aggressive pad you should ever need to do any kind of headlight. If you're using less than that, you are, you know, something else, 100 or something like that, you're just fucking around. You don't, you don't know what you're doing and you're tripping. There's no way because um, on one of these videos recently, I, I stated that, um, you know, like if you think of a light being soft as a teddy bear underneath that hard ass exterior coating, uh, which is going to be like diamond. Once you get past that diamond, you're on teddy bear, right? So you're, you know, you're grinding away on something that's super soft with something that's been to grind away with, uh, you know, something that's super hard, diamond hard or whatever. So you really got to be careful with that because um, even with me, when I'm doing it, I'm going really light. I'm checking my spots and sometimes you guys won't notice I'm doing that. I'm, I'm looking through and I'm trying to stop short because those grits, those 200, those 220s, those P220s and those P320s are going to really gouge out stuff. And you think like, oh, well, I'll just use p 500 to get them out and I'll just use 800s. But then they're so deep and fine, you're just not going to surface off and sometimes you You'll miss them and you know and then that's when you get uh, people in their finished products saying oh my god why do I still have these scratches striations and all this stuff like that uh, you know mainly you're not checking your works but you know other than that you are uh, using those p220s and 320s uh, there's a reason why I didn't bring those out until I got uh, you know pretty into this channel uh, just because it's gonna be uh, pretty hard for a lot of people to realize when to use that so I'm trying to uh, get that point across that, you know, rule of thumb, if you can get the light done with three to four P500s, you do so. If you feel like, damn, it's going to take five, six, seven P500s to get this light done, right? Once you do that first test zone, that test zone gives you, um, that first P500 test gives you the idea of what it's going to take to get this light done. Um, so once you get to that, oh, it's going to take five, six, seven, eight, then you go down to the 320 and then you test with the 320 and see how much is taking it down. If it's going to take more than three 320s, then you bust it down. You stop immediately. You, I mean, once you figure it out, once you do a little spot and it's like it's really not doing shit, then you bust it down to the 220s, okay? And then if it just takes a million 220s, that's what you're going to do. That's uh, You know, the 220s are pretty cheap. The 220s and the 500s are pretty cheap. Um, so when, uh, you know, you get to those 220s or whatnot, uh, you gotta have to go really light, okay, for many reasons, it's because, uh, they're extremely more abrasive, and then they're extremely tougher, so, uh, you know, just a simple bump up against your tape, and rule of thumb, if I'm using, if, if I think I have to use a 220, I tape off pretty aggressively, you know, I'm doing five, six, seven layers around the headlight, just because if you just barely touch with a P220, you can eat through that tape really easy, okay, uh, the 500s, and everything else not so much but the 220 is just stronger harder and it's going to be more durable while you're grinding okay and um, at the same time it produces more heat because it's stronger it's not going to break down is easy so these things you don't want to use those as you see I used multiple p500s for this light and I'm going to be doing some stuff that you haven't seen before uh, or too often me do on this light I'm going to be doing a light uh, wet sand on this light here with the P800. Um, see this here? Very little bit of water. Um, to accurately wet sand, you don't have to drown the light. A lot of people think like, I'm going to keep going, have the water flowing, I'm going to have it flowing, dripping everywhere. Then by the time like, they're done with one light, you look on the ground, you look all over the vehicle, there's like you know a gallon of water everywhere, right? Now look at this. I'm kind of just sliding it over. If you listen to it, listen to it. Sliding it over, it's just it creates like a um, like a slick type, uh, you know, gelatinous type um, 
you know, substance or liquid, and it just kind of adheres. It sucks in the pad, so you don't use any pressure, really. You know, you just use the gimbal, whatever you are, if you're using your hand. With the gimbal, it's easier because it's easy to control your depth of pitch or how strong or how uh, hard you're pushing, per se. Uh, and it just kind of vacuum sucks to it, and it's just kind of shh, shh, shh as you heard and uh you don't need to do too much but um as i was saying with the uh, scratch removal or whatnot or uh, removing scratches which ones are good at this is just another uh step if you guys are having issues with um uh scratching or getting your smoothness your clarity out or whatever um you can kind of use this method right here where i did the little minor wet sanding really just really quick you don't have to do the whole light and do make it make it a huge whole full you know step or whatever just a little bit at you know after touch of the p uh 800 hand sanding you know add in the p 800 hand sand wet sanding okay p 800 hand wet sanding with the gimbal okay preferably if not if you don't have that um you know you can do it by hand or whatever and this will add a lot of clarity and smoothness to your light the reason why i'm doing it with this one because these lights are very elegant and the makeup of it is very smooth and very uh clear and just light and beautiful okay and those elegant lights like that because you, you, they're not all like this you know if you just had a regular honda it wouldn't you know the the appearance wouldn't be this way certain lights look a certain way and i do a little extra on it just to um get that top notch clarity now if you wanted to you could really add that step into any headlight uh practice but some of them are just not gonna really matter um but like i'm saying if you have any doubt that you know it's not gonna come out the way you want it or you just think it needs to have a little extra touch or if you just like i said if you just say fuck it, you got you got extra time to you know it's it doesn't take much longer if you want to put it in there it's fine but every light is not going to respond to it the same and every light is not going to actually need it um this light, I believe, is one of them that kind of needed them. Just once again, you'll see why at the end. I'll touch base on that again. That uh, super gloss, super clear uh, part, it kind of helps with. Uh, and also helps with any kind of small um, um, scratches or swirls or anything like that. Helps knock those down, you know, a notch as well. As you see, uh, look at this here. Follow along with me. Uh, it's a little bit different than normal. Like I said, it's the first person view. You're pretty much seeing shit how I see it. Of course, I'm slowing down not to, uh, you know, drive you guys too crazy with it or, um, you know, uh, have any blurs or whatever. But as you can see how um, clear and shiny these headlights are at their natural state. Uh, of course, at the beginning, you really couldn't see that too much because they were all fucked up or whatnot. But um, yeah, these are going to be something else to look at once done. And you see I'm applying a little bit of extra um, polishing on this, a little bit of uh, slower polishing on that to really bring out that clarity. Uh, and, you know, uh, just applying a little bit more heat through the friction of polishing. Now, um, one of the things that I haven't emphasized enough on is um, you know why a lot of people the main reason a lot of people come to their final product or their finished product and they're like oh man I see little scratches or I see little things like that first and foremost it has to do with you not checking your work okay so you're not checking your work out of all these stages, every stage, you kind of check your work. Um, to keep it easy, um, I do plenty of checks. To keep it easy, I would just say after your P800, you kind of give it a glance, whatever. When you hit it with the water is the true test. Okay, One of the tests you can do to see if a scratch will come out of a vehicle or how deep it is, is you kind of douse it with water. You repeatedly hit the area with water and just kind of see if it disappears in the water because the water fills in the scratch and gives it appearance of not being there. So uh, when you are spraying this down, you're looking at it. 
when you're wiping it off before the water evaporates, you're looking at it. And if you see stuff that is too deep or stuff that you think won't come out, I mean, these, which ones to, uh, you know, tell that won't come out if you see them too well, if you see them and you, ha you, you don't have to struggle to see them or catch them. Those are not probably going to come out by the end, so you need to soften up your touch, go back at it again, grind a little bit more with the P800 or the you know or the 3000 Trizac, do a little uh, you know hand motion, little hand sanding or whatever to make sure that they're gone. And then at this step here as well, this is the final checkpoint. When I'm see what I'm doing right here, and I'm I'm just going over and I'm looking at it real close right now. If you guys don't know, I'm looking at it really close and I'm wiping off every area just to make sure my eyes are focusing and looking in those areas to see if there's any blemishes, any scratches or whatever that will not come out when finally sprayed. Okay, sometimes you can have some really small superficial ones that will just uh, be eliminated once you spray, but you have to know the difference. Now, the best way I can describe that to you is if you can really see it, really see it, like there's no problem seeing it, it's really abrupt, then you gotta do it again, go over it. But if you can barely see anything, your eyes barely catch it, and you're like looking back and forth, and you come back the next time, you're like, oh, it's a little something there, that's not much, right? Then it's fine, but when you can just flat out see it, you just can't spray over it because it's going to see through the clear coat. Uh, so you got to check your work, you know, dozens of times while you're working. People are just running through this. The people that are on here saying, oh, I have this. I don't know why I still have these or whatever. It's because you're not checking your work. And then second, it's because you're pushing too hard. It is not a strength thing. Okay, I'm 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 one of those people that have uh, you know generally been stronger than most of the people he's ever came across in his life, believe it or not. And that's not tooting my own horn. That's just my reality. Okay, um, it does not take strength. You know, I can train a two-year-old to do this as long as they can hold their um see that's my car i had to take those rims off uh because the state that i'm from uh just doesn't take care of the fucking roads anymore so i had too many troubles with the rims put my original ones back on might revisit that again in the future uh but uh that is the uh, the uh headlight restoration pro mobile but anyways um I could train a two or three year old to hold this, uh, you know, drill up to the light and do this work, uh, you know, far strength wise. It, it does not take strength. It's finesse. It's soft touch. It's light, tender touch. Okay. You know, like the ladies like. But anyhow, <laughs> that's a different topic. Uh, so don't muscle up the light, man. It's not worth it. Look at this. Look at this is what fine touch. This is what silky smooth shit you can produce with a fine touch okay do a hundred percent of what you can do to not put pressure on the light okay it's all about finesse think about hitting those uh spots over and over 15 times to remove the shit instead of just removing it in one pass that is the key to the smoothness here stay tuned for more and make sure to subscribe